Whose side is Sami Zayn really on? This is the WWE Week in Review setup, episode 279, where we go over Monday Night Raw. By halfway through the video, we go through SmackDown. We're going to talk about this two-hour edition of Monday Night Raw from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Let's run it up in a WWE Action Figure setup style. Opening the show with Jimmy and Jay Uso talking about their differences. No, things are not 100% settled with Jim and Jay Uso, but they are on the right track. They are becoming the Usos again, but they don't, they don't want to be anybody's side piece. They don't want to be Roman Reigns' side piece. They want to be the Usos. Before they can get any more words in, they are attacked by the bloodline. Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and then Jacob Fatu even gets involved. But the Usos were able to fend him off. It was awesome seeing Jimmy and Jay team back up to take out that freaking bloodline, that supposed bloodline, that solo bloodline. The Usos fought back. They took him out, and they took the ring. Adam Pearce was not too happy. He's like, I knew Jimmy was going to be here. I didn't know bloodline was going to be here. So he was really mad at Nick Aldis over the phone. But this was a really good opener. Sheamus went one-on-one -on -one with Ludwig Kaiser. This match was pretty decent. Sheamus did win with the bro kick, and they did say that Sheamus is going to be in contention for World Heavyweight Championship gold. There's some sort of gold, whether that's intercontinental material with Braun Breaker, which I'd be fine with. I think that would be great. But yeah, I feel like it's time for championship gold for Sheamus. I mean, yeah, he's been proving himself week in, week out, beating Pete Dunne, and now he beat freaking Ludwig Kaiser here with a big bro kick. Match was pretty hard hitting. Finally! They got Jay in the bloodline. Now they need Sammy. We saw Sammy Zayn, Jay Uso, and Jimmy Uso all on the same screen. Sammy didn't want Jimmy around while he talked to Jay, right? So he's like, hey, I need to talk to Jay in private. You can just feel the tension between Jimmy and Sammy. And remember in the original Bloodline, Jimmy and Sammy were the closer ones. They were closer than Jay. Obviously, Sammy would become closer to Jay as the Bloodline broke up, the original Bloodline. But yeah, Sammy's like, are you actually considering going back with the Bloodline? Just stay out of it. Stay out of it. It's not your fight. I disagree with Sammy Zayn. He's not family. Jay told him he's not family. You wouldn't understand, which was kind of insulting to Sammy. I was like, oh my gosh. Just wait till you see what I talk about here in a second. Ivy Nile went one-on-one -on -one with Selena Vega, and during Selena Vega's entrance, she held up a fan's sign that said, push Selena, and that's not what they did. LWO and American Maid got into it on ringside, distracting Selena Vega, allowing for Ivy Nile to pick up the victory. I was like, bro, they just held up a sign saying, push Selena, and then she takes the L. I was like, really, bro? But yeah, Ivy Nile wins. <laughs> Seth Rollins wanted a piece of Bronson Reed, or did he? Bronson Reed, he baited Seth Rollins to the parking lot because Seth Rollins was just cutting a promo in the middle of the ring. Obviously, you got to think Seth Rollins was angry about that Bears game, so he was already heated. So, he's like, you know what, Bronson Reed? I'll meet you in the parking lot. Let's go. Curb stomps Bronson Reed into the hood of a car, then proceeds to get freaking attitude adjustments out of a freaking back of a semi-truck trailer through four tables. I was like, are you kidding me right now? So yeah, Bronson Reed got the better of Seth Rollins in that parking lot. Absolutely cooked him. I thought after the curb stomp into the hood, I'm like, wow, Seth just got the best of Bronson Reed. Nope, he did not. Their match is going to be chaos here at the Crown Jewel. It's going to be absolutely chaos. The Miz all night was trying to get out of this Final Testament Wyatt Six controversy, but he didn't. First, he tried to make up with R-Truth, but R-Truth wasn't having it. He had something in his pocket, that being a right hand. Thank God for the Alpha Academy. They talked some sense in the truth. They're like, don't listen to him, truth. So he punched the Miz in the face and then got approached by the Final Testament and the Final Testament's like, let's find Bo Dallas. We need to talk to Bo Dallas or I'm going to break your legs, Miz. I was like, oh my God. So yeah, the Miz is in a big predicament. Either he messes with the Final Testament or he messes with the Wyatt Six. I'd just totally dip, but he tried to make up with truth, but truth wasn't having it. This was funny stuff. Was that triple threat tag team match number one contendership for the tag titles? You had the War Raiders who are looking amazing. New Day with the partially heel Xavier Woods and then you also so had Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee in there from the LWO. This triple threat tag match was great. I love the new triple threat tag team match rules for, with one member of each team being legal in the match instead of two people. It's so weird when it's two people and it's a triple threat. Three people legal. It was awesome. It was fun. Little controversy from Xavier Woods during the match. He was using some heel tactics, hitting people off the apron, and then he even targeted Rey Mysterio while Kofi Kingston was looking for a double team. So there was a little miscommunication with the New Day. More controversy between them. Chad Gable would proceed to get involved. Screw it over 
for the LWO. He would take out Rey Mysterio as they were closing in on the victory, allowing for the War Raiders to pick up the victory, hit a double team maneuver on Kofi Kingston, and become number one contenders. Hey, good for Eric and Ivar. Remember how I said Jay and Sammy talked? Okay, so Jimmy wanted to talk to Sammy Zayn. Jay's like, okay, go talk to Sammy, all right? You gotta promise me you're not gonna go with a fight, okay? And Jimmy's like, okay, I got it. I'm gonna go talk to Sammy before he leaves. I'm gonna go find Sammy. He found Sammy, but by that time, Sammy was already talking to Solo Sokoa. See him in there? I got him in the ambulance. Sami Zayn is talking to Solo Sokoa. But there is no way, there is no way that Sami Zayn joins that bloodline. He will join Jimmy, Jay, and Roman. I gare and friggin' tee it. It's just gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time. Uh, but this was awesome. Seeing Jimmy and Jay see Sami talk to Solo. Such good cinema. And our main event of the show, Dominic Mysterio had to go up against a former world champion. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was gonna be Rhea Ripley. I thought they were gonna do Rhea Ripley versus Dominic Mysterio, but it was Damian Priest. They gave Damian Priest some spotlight, or did they? Because the Judgment Day, all of them, literally all of them, got involved, distracted Damian Priest, even put their hands on Damian Priest, wouldn't end very well, because Priest would beat the crap out of him with a steel chair, proceeding to lose the match. Damian Priest lost the match with a bunch of help from the Judgment Day. And remember what Adam Pearce said? He said if Dom wins, he'll consider putting Dom in a World Heavyweight Championship match. And he beat Priest. Oh my god. Obviously, it wasn't tactics that, you know, were favored by Adam Pearce, probably. But he still beat Priest. He's going to get that championship match, right, Adam Pearce? I guess we'll see. Damian Priest was obviously pissed off. He wailed a steel chair over the back of Dominic Mysterio multiple times, literally probably breaking his back, and then they ended the show with Damian Priest on top. Liv and Raquel couldn't do anything about it but watch on ringside, and it was just absolute chaos. Damian Priest was so angry. It was insane. He was so angry, bro. So freaking angry. Solid episode of Raw. It felt really, really fast. My favorite moment was Sammy talking to Solo. That was just cinema. My favorite match was easily the number one contendership for the tag team titles. I really enjoyed that one. And ranking the show out of 10, I'll probably give it a solid 8 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty good flowing show. Now, we're gonna jump into SmackDown. Friday Night SmackDown might have been pre-recorded, but it was still a pretty solid show. Did it feel long to anybody else? I thought this was a pretty solid episode of SmackDown. We are gonna talk about it. The reunition of the bloodline has commenced. Let's go. Before we get there, let's talk about the entire play-by-play, -play, the entire show. Let's do this. We opened up the show with Tiffany Stratton basically threatening Liv Morgan and and Nia Jax because they have the match today for that Crown Jewel Championship. So Tiffany Stratton's basically just like, hey, y'all better both watch out. Could I, I could cash in this briefcase. And yeah, Nia, I could take your title too. I don't have to just go after Liv Morgan. And obviously this just broke down. This broke down between basically everybody in the ring. And then it led to our opening match, which was Tiffany Stratton going one-on-one -on -one with Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan would roll up Tiffany Stratton and grab the tights to pick up the victory. So of course, Liv Morgan had to cheat to win this match. Did anybody else notice how they were beating the crowd? out of each other with that briefcase. Tiffany Stratton got whacked over the head, I believe by Liv Morgan, and it left a big bruise on Tiffany Stratton's head. I was like, dude, how dare they do that to Tiffany Stratton? But it ended with Nia Jax delivering an Annihilator to Liv Morgan. Nia basically took out everybody, looking super dominant. But dang, Nia Jax cannot cut a promo for her life. It was pretty deadly. Versus the Street Profits in tag team action. B-Fab was on ringside, and B-Fab actually helped the Street Profits pick up this victory. B-Fab delivered a body slam, I believe, to Kit Will Wilson on the ringside area and it, it, she did it like nothing. I was like, oh my gosh, she just picked them up like nothing. Like he wasn't even a 225 pound dude. I was like, dang, okay, B Fab. And then the Street Profits were about to take care of business, hit a double blockbuster and pick up the victory and beat pretty deadly. So hey, Street Profits are back on track. Maybe they're looking for that tag team gold once again. I swear, any match that Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell are in, no offense, but it's always sloppy. And I don't even blame Naomi and Bailey here. It was all Candice and Indy. I'm sorry, man. I hate to be hating on him. There was sort of a weird tag miscommunication at the end where Naomi was tagged in but got hit off the apron. It was just all weird, but Naomi was able to pick up the victory with the weird rear view and beat Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Easily the highlight of this show, the bloodline is back. Jimmy, Jay, and Roman Reigns all cut an amazing promo. I would, I gotta give props to Jay because Jay made his way here to SmackDown and he is giving Roman and Jimmy another chance. He talked about all the hell that they put him through over the past couple years he said mentally physically emotionally and i'm like man everything jay said was just 100 facts but then roman instead of saying no yeet he said 
Yeet! And they all threw their ones to the sky, starting with Jimmy, then to Jay, and with the OTC. They are back. They are on the same page for their match coming up later today at the Crown Jewel. Let's go. This fatal four-way match actually went really hard. It was Lash Legend, Eo Sky, Piper Niven, and Bianca Belair giving us a sneak peek of what's going to be going down at the Crown Jewel in that fatal four-way tag team match here in just a regular fatal four-way. Amazing stuff! Obviously, it broke down between all of their tag partners who were all on ringside. Literally, they were all on ringside. It all broke down, and it led to Io Sky sneaking a victory after Bianca Belair did the KOD to Lash Legend. I was like, oh my goodness. But there's no way Damage Control win those tag titles at the Crown Jewel. If you guys want to see the predictions, feel free to check out the YouTube channel. Predictions are on the channel already. And it was our main event where Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton teamed up to go up against Imperium's Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser. This match was actually pretty decent. It was cool to see Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes team up again. They keep teasing Randy Orton looking at the title belt while Cody Rhodes is looking at other things just to tease the match. We all know Randy Orton's going to turn heel eventually and he's going to go up against Cody Rhodes. We're all waiting on that. I can't wait for that to happen. Anyways, Cody Rhodes did hit the crossroads on Lodwig Kaiser to pick up the victory here for the match after Randy Orton hit Gunther with an RKO getting him out of the equation but it wasn't over after that. Paul Triple H Levesque even put up the producer thing on the screen to trick us all to, to thinking the show was over but it wasn't because Kevin Owens came in the ring with a steel chair assaulted Randy Orton and Randy Right when it looked like Cody Rhodes was going to get his hands on Kevin Owens, here comes Gunther back in the ring, taking advantage of the opportunity, locking in a sleeper hold on Cody Rhodes, and then the show ends. I was like, oh my god, this new Kevin Owens going absolutely insanely heel on Randy Orton, Gunther tearing up Cody Rhodes. What is going to happen at the Crown Jewel? I cannot wait to review that show. I will be reviewing that show Sunday morning, okay? Sunday morning. So stay tuned for that review. It's going to be happening once again Sunday morning. Favorite moment on the show, easily the Bloodline reunited. That was top tier, and my favorite match was probably the Fatal 4-Way Women's match. That match went really hard. Ranking this show out of 10, I'll give it a solid 7 out of 10. Man, the bloodline is back. This is Berto Live saying enjoy Crown Jewel and stay tuned for the review on that show, and I'll see you guys next time. Berto Live is out.